Pirates lost to the Braves yesterday, 7-1. to Down in Atlanta, they lost 3-4 of four in the series. They got their brains beaten out, really, uh, in these last three games, getting outscored 37-9. to How many more of these numbers do you want? They're 18-28 and 28 right now, their record. A uh, season low, 10 games under 500. And you know what? You don't want to hear this. I don't want to say it. But something really needs to change for this season to not just completely spiral out of control at this stage. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins right where you found this. All that's left, really, from when the Pirates opened this season in modestly promising fashion is the bullpen. Because now it's Tyler Anderson, now it's JT Brubaker, uh, the guys who were their best starting pitchers are are getting hit, are getting homered, really. (laughs) Not so much hit as they are getting homered and that was the one thing that was kind of keeping the dearth of offense from engulfing the whole process and now that's not there either and the offense isn't close to coming around four more hits yesterday just four Um, Brian Reynolds had an RBI double in the first inning and then there was virtually nothing And that's the way a lot of these games have gone. Something has to change. And I think I know what it is, but it's also something that's, you know, kind of out of everybody's control. There needs to be a great big jolt of Kibrian Hayes. There just does. There needs to be something that... The players on the field, coaching staff, manager, everybody who's involved in the process sees on a daily basis as part of the future, as hope. And you can say good things about Reynolds, and he'll deserve it. He's He's got 16 doubles now with the one yesterday. He's leading the National League in doubles. Batting 298, 806 OPS. He's he's done the job. He is back to being Brian Reynolds. That's nice. He's got four more years of control. He's not going anywhere. He can be part of this. I don't want to paint him as untouchable or anything like that when it comes to trades or whatever, but he can be part of this. But Reynolds isn't that guy that's going to offer you hope. Reynolds is more of a known commodity. He's been here for a little bit. He might have been that guy in, you know, 2019 to an extent, but then so was Kevin Newman. Hayes is different. Hayes is different. Hayes, when you watch him play, it it just cuts different, Uh, both at the plate and in the field. But he's rehabbing right now with AAA Indianapolis. Homered yesterday in the eighth inning, a good sign. And he's going to be there until June the 2nd because he had been placed on the 60-day DL while the Pirates made other roster moves. And the athletic training staff and the medical staff wanted this time to take it easier with Hayes and put him in a more controlled setting. So he's going to have some time down there, and then he's going to get some time off. He's going to take some at-bats, and then he's going to get a game off. And ideally, he comes back to Pittsburgh at 100% following that wrist injury. But you can't overstate. You can't overstate the impact that he'd have on this team, including intangibly. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. It's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park, home of Steak on a Stone, served 
right in front of you on an 800-degree stone. And you cut it up and you cook it the way you want. Lay it down on its side, move it off to the side. I, I do a lot of different things. I've had this now several times, and it's really good. And the best part about it is, is like, if if you end up not getting it exactly the way you want, it's on you, and you learn it. You know what I mean? You learn it for next time you get better at it. Visit North Shore Tavern right across from PNC Park. This this could end up being a, a pretty big bummer. I, I'm not here to sugarcoat this. I don't do that sort of thing. I liked a lot of what I saw from this team. I thought there were a lot of encouraging signs. And really, it wasn't all that long ago that they were just a handful of games under 500 and they were beating the Padres and everything else here. But even then, the offense wasn't there. And I kept sounding the alarm about the offense. And then Colin Moran got hurt. And Colin Moran was only this team's, I was about to say, biggest run producer. He was our only run producer. He was the only guy driving in runs. Yeah, Adam Frazier, for all the great stuff he's done, is sitting at the top of the order. Reynolds is batting second. It was Moran that was driving in the runs. There's been nobody to do that. Nobody to do that in his absence. If you think about what this lineup would look like with Frazier hitting the way he is, Reynolds hitting the way he is, Hayes batting third, which is where he was supposed to be, and Moran hitting fourth the way he was before he got hurt, that was going to be a pretty fun top four. And then from there, all you needed was one or two other people to just kind of get hot or whatever. You could slide them up to five or six, and you'd have something. Not a contender, but it wouldn't be this. It would be fun, and it also would be something that resulted in the occasional nice W. And hope. Hope's a pretty big deal. Hope's a pretty big deal. Not just in sports, in life. If you're doing something on a day-to-day basis and you don't see something or don't envision something at the end of the rainbow, you know, then it's just setting setting the alarm clock off to get up and go 9 to 5 and robot your way through the whole thing. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants that. When the Pirates saw Key out there and they saw him hit that home run at Wrigley Field in the opener, first at bat, 440 feet, I was there. The dugout went nuts. Why? Because they got a star. He's on our side. It was great for them, you know? It makes a difference. It lifts everybody up. Man, is that needed right now. It really is. This team could... This team could use him, but it's it's going to be another few days till he's back, and maybe by then Moran will be back, and maybe by then the starting pitchers will have found some equilibrium after all these struggles of late, and the bullpen can just keep going. But it's asking a lot. It's asking a lot, especially once you start digging that hole, and that hole is getting a little deeper. Right now. When we come back, just one question. time for just one question and today's comes from john brevak who asks dan it's getting closer to the draft what are you thinking kumar rocker jack Leiter, and do you think it'll take years before the pirates get to the playoffs again this team is pitiful well john i'm gonna say it again they're missing their three and four in the lineup with no place to go and if i can get a little uh, I'm not sure what the term is I'm looking for here. A little risky in the area of, of ticking some people off. It's crazy to me how when the Pirates stink, no one ever mentions when they've got injuries. Like, it's as if injuries don't count as it relates to the Pirates. And you know what I'm talking about, you know? The Steelers have... Somebody go down, and it's just, it's, it's the end of the world. Well, how could that happen? Well, of course, they, the Steelers lost Bud Dupree. They were 11-0 and 0 
with Bud, one and five without him. Well, they lost Bud, and everybody mentioned constantly that they lost Bud Dupree. The Penguins lose Evgeny Malkin for 20-some games or whatever, and all we're talking about is this and that with without Malkin. The Pirates lose their best player and their most productive hitter, and it never gets mentioned. All you hear is Pirates stink, Pirates stink, Pirates stink. I'm not saying the Pirates would contend if they had these two guys. I am saying that they wouldn't stink. But you ask, you know, about Rocker and Lighter, and obviously those guys are having each of them uh, ups and downs, which is a good thing. Any baseball evaluator will tell you they much prefer to see a younger player struggle and then try to fight their way out of it. Adjust to the adjustment was how Clint Hurdle used to phrase it. Because if everything just goes swimmingly, you don't really learn all that much. You don't learn uh, how they'll overcome that when they get to, let's say, double-A AA or triple-A or to the majors, when they'll be facing situations and circumstances that they would never seen before. So you want to see that to an extent. You also want to be really sold on the idea that they're the right player. Rocker and Lighter are still right up there atop most of the list. Jordan Lawler, the high school shortstop out of Texas, is somebody that a lot of people are talking about. He'd be further away. But I really hope that the amount of time that it takes any of these prospects to get to Pittsburgh wouldn't be a driving force in the Pirates' decision. There are advantages to taking college players in that they're more certain but there also can be advantages to taking high school players in that their ceiling can be even higher than what's right in front of your eyes at the moment. It involves a lot of projection and analysis and everything else here, but it can be worthwhile. I really, really hope the Pirates don't take that into consideration. I really, really hope that if Rocker or Lighter is good enough to be the number one pick, I hope they end up with a starting pitcher. I say that mostly because of the unfair nature of Major League Baseball's economics. You can't get a starting pitcher, an elite starting pitcher, any other way. You just can't. The Pirates will never go and sign a Trevor Bauer for $40 million at one year. Even if Bob Nutting were the biggest spender on the planet. You'll never, ever see that. The system doesn't allow for it. The best that you can hope for when it comes to elite starting pitching is through the draft or through the international free agency acquisitions. That's it. That's it. I mean, you can get lucky with somebody who develops and matures and becomes somebody that you can really count on. But you're not going to see a Garrett Cole, you know, become available to Pittsburgh in any other form than the one that they got him in. Never mind that they didn't do much with him. That has nothing to do with this discussion. I'm talking about the actual talent, the talent level. So I'm hoping that one of these two rises up. But if they don't, I sure wouldn't force it. I wouldn't force it based on the whole pitching is so super important and there's no other way to get it. You have to get the best prospect completely regardless of position. I appreciate the question. I appreciate the frustration. I appreciate the... uh, exasperation really when watching this team I mean, they're they're tough to watch these games are really tough to watch and and I respect the people that stick it out you know it's it's not easy and it's definitely not fun one more time Brian Hayes needs to get back up here and make a difference we'll have another one of these daily shot of pirates thingies tomorrow <laughs> Thank you. 
At Point Park University, in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, they understand there's no substitute for real-world experience and career-building connections. Their innovative curriculum engages students with distinctive experiential learning opportunities. Point Park's pioneering co-op program empowers qualified students to work in full-time, paid positions with their corporate partners while earning college credits. Visit pointpark.edu slash works to learn more. Career ready. That's the point. Point Park University. Your front door. Your car. Your gym locker. Your gun. Safety is a habit. Learn more about how to keep guns safe and secure. Visit projectchildsafe.org.